T. Pablo is a philanthropist. I like helping people, number one. And I'm a very creative person, so I like creating things. I like doing things. I saw a need for creative artists, people art in the arts, to have a uh, way to do things. Uh, it's like an in-house, uh, one-stop shop place to go to do things, you know. I come up in, in our art world, and they had the Coltrane Center, and you went there to learn how to do all kind of stuff, you know, music, art, everything, you know. And Detroit Musicians is a community, it's like a fraternity. You probably didn't play with everybody somewhere, even as a kid, because they always allowed you to come in and express yourself. Like, a, like you know, jam sessions, you know, they, they always was able to reach out or reach back to upcoming musicians. So that way you'd be able to play with all these greats. Maybe you didn't make money, but you played with them. And uh, some of you did make money, but uh, because you're a Detroit musician, the door was always open to play with anybody that came through, even the stars. If you knew somebody that knew the stars you was in. I always said, growing up, if I had a TV show, it would be about women's issues, okay? It was in the back of my head, and I didn't pursue it. I just had it there, you know. But the opportunity came about right here at this TV station when Barry Ross, who has a show here, liked my music. And, excuse me, he got Misty Love to get me to come on the show. Misty Love's the head of the Black Music Awards, Detroit Black Music Awards. Go on the show, do your thing. I said, well, I, I, you know, I don't have, I, you know, I, I just do hobby music. I just go in the studio and make music. I say, but my band doesn't really know my original stuff. Uh, well, Panama is. Wow, like Dick Clark, you know, Panama I said, well, that's that's a challenge. Okay, I, I do it, you know. So I come on the show, I do it. Everybody liked it. The club was packed. They saw me on TV. Um, but before I left the station, the director's an old friend of mine. And he said that there were some slots open for some shows, you know. And I said, what? You know, then they told me what it would take to do it. I'm saying, I want this, you know, because this is an opportunity they threw at me. I grew up in a, a matriarchal society. It was all black community. All, everything was black. The stores, the police, the mayor, everything. And there was never no fear, you know. It was always, you know, like storybook land, you know. I went to George Washington Carver School, you know, the black school. And, uh, I long for that, you know, the women, you know, they call your name a block away, it's dead or you come running in, you know, and I long for it, it was like, it was like a story, it was like make-believe almost compared to what I'm looking at today, but when I look around, I say, well, if, if men are in charge of the community, we're doing a bad job, we need, we need direction, we need, we need, we need motivation, so I said, well, maybe I can put together this TV show and make it about women's issues. And when women come together to discuss these issues, uh, we'll hear messages if we listen. And uh, we already know that um, if women were in, like back when I was coming up, everybody had flowers and manicured lines and clothes on the line and kids running around because it was just beautiful. I mean, just no, no, women had control because they had that influence. And that influence was important, okay? My grandfather, God bless his soul, was born in Jamaica. If you don't have five jobs, you're lazy. But he told me that he built three homes with his bare hands because my grandmother had influence. I said, okay, <laughs> I figured it out, okay? You got influence, all right? So I figured we morph into a situation where you realize you got this gigantic influence that I like my daughters. I tell my daughters, any man is not better than no man, okay? Any man is not better than no man. If he's not willing to build a house with his bare hands, he may not be capable, but he's, if he's willing, that's good. I would like for them to experience a sense that somebody cares about them, that somebody is willing to uh, find out what their problems are and bring solutions. Because too many times, you know, we tend to feel that nobody cares. Nobody cares that our neighborhood is messed up. Nobody cares that the kid's using drugs. 
Nobody's cared as you know, you know, so many right. not cares. Right. It's time to care. Right. Right. What we'll do is we'll we'll identify a problem and then we'll go out and get experts. Meaning if you have a health problem, we go get a doctor. If you have a uh, a legal issue, we go get an attorney. If you have a real estate issue, we go get a realtor. If you have a money issue, we go get an investor, a banker, somebody that can counsel you and show you ways to increase wealth. As a man, I feel that uh, we, in a sense, are not protecting the community like we should, or the women and children. And so, uh, I figure this is a good way to start motivating each other by listening to the issues of women and if men listen they're here the things that they need to know um, you can't uh, judge all women the same but all women had a basically same issues as it relates to children and home education wealth creating wealth insurance retirement same issues Welcome to Detroit Class 313. I'm your host, Marty K. Johnson. And today we have with us our special guest, uh, the Youth First Awareness uh, Team. We have Tandy yes. and we have Jay Harrell, uh, who's going to be with us. And also we have John Hollywood uh, Drama. He's also going to join as well. Well, welcome to Detroit Class 313, ladies. Thank How's you. It going? Great. Good. Good. Great. Good. Glad to have you on set on today. We're, um, we, you want to this month actually um, come and tell us about what's going on with the, with the youth awareness. Um, there's, uh, I know there's a concert that's going on uh, in the middle, middle part of March. Yes. Pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, March 16th, Saturday from one tour. We are having a youth awareness first uh, charity. The charity comes in. Uh, we will also be donated to Focus Hope. Um, we want our youth to come out and show, show their talent. Where you know we have we the same rap and dance, so we want them to come out and be able to express themselves in a comfortable setting where you know they can do you know things that they can't do anywhere else. We want to set. Um, a program where they can come and we support them you know, around many you know adults because you know due to the uh, the violence and things that's been going on in Detroit we want our youth to feel comfortable and know that there are places where they can come and be them say those. Well you know you hit up you hit you certainly hit um us, you hit the passion of a lot of people in regards to what the Detroit youth are doing. We certainly want to right. uh, bring the solution, and that's what we're about here at Detroit right. Class 313, is about bringing the solutions to the women right. and the families. So right. we're going to have the, the concert, the talent show, right. and um, it's going to help and support Focus, um, focus Hope. Correct. All right. Correct. Because it's a win-win situation. Oh, yeah. And because Focus Hope, for many years, donated and help families eat and they train you. I actually, I went through a program um, with, not through Focus Hope, but that had friendship with Focus Hope. Okay. And um, for years, they have helped families and they are going through some things where they need support. And I, I took it to my team and I'm like, look, let's support Focus Hope. So that's what we're doing right now. We're showing, giving back to them. What they get. I was I say that actually what you're doing is returning um, back to giving them exactly what what the um, what Detroit has already given unto them, which is um, to be able to have a program for the youth, uh, cause them to be able to be active and do things, and to display their talents, to cause them to have uh, uh, something to do um, uh, after school. Now, how often is this program run? How when are we? Um, well, this is our first one. Okay. Um, we do plan to have um, more. This is just the beginning of, of, of a good program. Okay. We also will have to have one in Cape um, okay. Pretty much the same thing, but different um, different takes. But we plan on doing more with the youth and the community. That's our goal, to, to support our youth, because they are in the future. 
Okay, and what are some of the things, Jay and Lynn, that they can expect when they, when they come on. to uh, at the, start the at the Confidant? Correct. Okay, and that's located right there, Woodward, between Claremont. Oh, right next to Claremont. Okay, and okay. Hover. And Hover. Okay, so there's a lot of things that um, the kids, they don't have in the city. Something that they can um, just, you know, lounge and have fun. We're going to have like face painting and bounces for the little kids. And um, we're going to have police officers come in and talk about the awareness, but, you know, answer questions and things like that. And just, you know, they can just have fun and lay back and, and be a kid. Yeah, and be a kid. That's what yeah. Yeah. So it's like a whole and family. And be safe at the same time. <laughs> so the whole family can come out, you know, the parents and everything to support their children. Right. And, and see what they do on a daily basis. Well it, well, it sounds like a good program. I certainly would. You got me on. I'm, I'm going to market it. Absolutely. So um, with, when you guys had started this, you, you, that was your intention to get the, the youth and gathered together in regards to having them into a safe uh, place? You know, Correct. And Correct. Because um, not just this year, but the end of the year, I lost my sister to violence in the streets. And, um, other, and I know of so many other people who lost young children to gun violence and other life, different type of violence in the um, city. So, you know, and I work, I also work with DPS. I've been with the school system for 16 years, and I talk to the children on a regular basis. So we talk, and I pretty much know what, exactly what they want, and they just want to set the environment somewhere they can go and be themselves. So this is a good opportunity just now for, for me to see children happy. This so, is their parents too, you know, so y'all can come. Exactly. And, and, and actually when you're doing that, you're just planting the seeds for our youth to cause them to be able to want to do that as well because you're planting seeds. And one thing about a seed, we do know that it, it, it grows and it grows and it Correct. flourishes. So Correct. we want that, we definitely want we want to wish you all the best. Now, if someone wants to be a part of this, how about, how can they contact you um, to be a part of, how we know that you want some support um, by all means, but then also, say it's a youth, some youths want, they want to be a part of it. Well, they, um, it's, it's three of us, we have our numbers that can call, well, my number is 313 um, 363-6588. And I'm Tandy, phone number 313-948-8338. And on, um, we do have flyers out. So, you know, someone can contact us. Uh, we can put you on a list if you want to do a show. We, so you're more than welcome to call us at any time. Well, there you have it. Absolutely. We thank you guys for coming on, sh on the show today. Thank you. Uh, we are so uh, ha ha excited for what it is you're doing in the community. Thank you. Um, we here at Detroit Class 313 appreciate you stopping by. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. We have with us right now uh, the artist John Hollywood Drama. All right. Did I get, how you doing? I'm doing good. All right. Well, he is uh, one of the um, creators of the Youth Awareness, First Awareness Program that we have here in Detroit. And he's just going to tell us a little bit about what's going on and how we can become and be a part of the uh, program that we're going to have a, a concert. And yes, it's, a, um, it's an all-age talent show. And uh, the beauty of it is um, it's not during any late hours. It's from 1 to 4 p.m. We also have multi-platinum artists. It's pretty Ricky that's going to be there performing also. And um, we have everything for the kids. We have SpongeBob characters coming out with the suits. We have Hello Kitty coming out. We have free food. We have free rappers. We're giving away bikes and, and all kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's an event for everybody. We have three-on-three -three basketball going on upstairs. So the entire building is accessible to everybody. So. Okay. So uh, now that's going to... Um, bring the attention, to, uh, gravitate uh, attention from a whole bunch of people regarding yes. the food, the, the, ch the children's uh, activities. Now, this is something that's ongoing, or you, you just having this event? No. How no, is it going? No, it's, def it's, 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 it's definitely ongoing. I've been here um, a couple of times on another show with uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, when okay. I first signed, uh, I've been uh, signed to Bone Thugs and Harmony for three years, going on four years. and. Uh, 
we are going to do the same thing in, uh, April 13th at the same place. Before that happens, we're going to have uh, a weekly event at the Boys and Girls Club where the okay. youth can just come out and showcase whatever talent they got. Uh, we're going to donate uh, that money to charity also. We're going to pick charities that we did the Matrix Center before. Now that's going to be at the Considine as well. No, it's going to be at the, at the Boys and Girls Club. Okay. The, the every week event is at the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, April 13th, LeBron Thugs and Harmony is going to okay. be at the Considine as well. Oh, okay. Now that's going to be at the Considine. Yes. Okay. Now you're going, when, when the, when the, um, the concert they're going to have in March, March 16th, and there's going to be the other on April, April 13th. April 13th. Now March okay. 16th is 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 good because um, not only will the kids with talent have a chance to come out and. Um, where we're giving away cash prizes. We have uh, promoters and rappers all over the state donating toys to give away. Um, not only are we giving away cash and toys to them, but the kids who don't sing, rap, or dance, we're going to have teachers there. We're going to have what I call educational trivia. And we're going to bring Absolutely. kids on stage, give them math problems, any kind of, and we're going to give away prizes to them also. So it's not just about if you have talent. It's the event for the whole family. Okay, so whether they have some talents that they're aware of or, or not, they or can not. still, it's going to be activities at, can, at every aspect. It's going to be face painting. That's wow. free. The food and snacks is free. The raffles are free. Um, and it's not going to be one prize. We're going to, uh, we're going to group the talent show off in groups of ten. So it's going to be four, five different prizes. situation where you realize you got this gigantic influence that I like my daughters I tell my daughters any man is not better than no man okay any man is not better than no man if he's not willing to build a house with his bare hands he may not be capable but he's, if he's willing that's good I would like for them to experience a sense that somebody cares about them that somebody is willing to uh, find out what their problems are and bring solutions. Because too many times, you know, we tend to feel that nobody cares. Nobody cares that our neighborhood is messed up. Nobody cares that the kids using drugs. Nobody's cared that, you know, you know so many right. not cares, right. it's time to care. Right. Right. What we'll do is we'll, we'll identify a problem and then we'll go out and get experts, meaning if you have a health problem, you go get a doctor. If you have a... Uh... T. Pablo is a philanthropist. I like helping people, number one. And I'm a very creative person, so I like creating things. I like doing things. I saw a need for creative artists and people art in the arts to have a way to do things. Uh, it's like an in-house, uh, one-stop shop place to go to do things, you know. I come up in, in our art world and they had the Coltrane Center and you went there to learn how to do all kind of stuff, you know, music, art, everything, you know. And Detroit Musicians is a community, it's like a fraternity. You probably didn't play with everybody somewhere, even as a kid, because they always allowed you to come in express yourself like a like you know jam sessions you know they they always was able to reach out or reach back to upcoming musicians so that way you're able to play with all these greats maybe you didn't make money but you played with them and uh, some of you did make money but uh, because you're a Detroit musician the door was always open to play with anybody that came through even the stars if you knew somebody that knew the stars you was in I always said growing up if I had a TV show it would be about women's issues, okay? 
it was in the back of my head and I didn't pursue it, I just had it there, you know. But the opportunity came about right here at this TV station when Barry Ross, who has a show here, liked my music. And, excuse me, he got Misty Love to get me to come on the show. Misty Love's the head of the Black Music Awards, Detroit Black Music Awards. Go on the show, do your thing. I said, well, I, I, you know, I don't have, I, you know, I, I just do hobby music. I just go in the studio and make music. I said, but my band doesn't really know my original stuff. Uh, well, Panamas. Wow, like Dick Clark, you know, Panamas. I said, well, that's, that's a challenge. Okay, I, I do it, you know. So I come on the show, I do it. Everybody liked it. The club was packed. They saw me on TV. Um, but before I left the station, the director's an old friend of mine, and he said that there were some slots open for some shows, you know. I said, like, what? You know, then they told me what it would take to do it. I'm Zen, I want this, you know, because this is an opportunity they threw at me. I grew up in a, a matriarchal society. It was all black community. All everything was black. The stores, the police, the mayor, everything. And there was never no fear, you know. It was always, you know, like storybook land, you know. I went to George Washington Carver School, you know, the black school. And uh, I longed for that. You know, the women, you know, they call your name a block away as dead or you come running in, you know. And I longed for it. Like, it was like a story. It was like make believe almost compared to what I'm looking at today. But when I look around, I say, well, if, if men are in charge of the community, we're doing a bad job. We need, we need direction. We need, we, need, we need motivation. So I said, well, maybe I can put together this TV show and make it about women's issues. And when women come together to discuss these issues, uh, we'll hear messages if we listen. And uh, we already know that um, if women were in like back when I was coming up, everybody had flowers and manicured lines and clothes on the line and kids running around because it was just beautiful. I mean, just no, no, women had control because they had that influence. And that influence was important. Okay? My grandfather, God bless his soul, was born in Jamaica.